Hello everybody, today we're going to be learning about flutes. Now flutes come in all different shapes and sizes and can be found in loads of different countries all over the world. In fact, the oldest musical instrument ever discovered was found in Germany and it was a flute made of bone which is 40,000 years old. That's so long ago, it's around the time that modern human beings first appeared in Europe. And scientists believe that music allowed the modern humans to create much stronger social bonds and a sense of togetherness, which is one of the reasons why they expanded so rapidly and went on to dominate the Neanderthal who were already in Europe. So let me show you a few different flutes I've got from around the world and then we're going to have a go at making our own flute. They look very different, don't they? But all of these flutes have got one thing in common, and that is that they make their sound by blowing air across an edge. A bit like blowing across the top of a bottle. So there's three different types of flute here. There is the end blown flute, the side blown or transverse flute, and the fipple flute. Let me show you what all that means. These three are all fipple flutes, which means that the air is directed through a mouthpiece across an edge to make the sound. Let me show you what they sound like. This is a recorder, which a lot of you will know from school. And this is a tin whistle, which is very similar to the recorder. And this is a Bedouin flute from North Africa, which sounds very different. But they all make the sound the same way by blowing air across the fibble. The ocarina also makes it sound the same way. And the same principle is used in a lot of pipe organ pipes. The next type of flute is the end blown flute. This is a set of pan pipes from South America and you make the sound by blowing across the top of the pipe. You'll see that there are two rows and we've got big pipes and we've got small pipes and they sound like this. You may have noticed that the big pipes make low sounds and the small pipes make high sounds, so try and remember that. The last kind of flute for today is the transverse or side blowing flute, which means that you blow air across a hole in the side of the instrument. This is an orchestral flute which you probably recognise and sounds like this. This is a piccolo, which you'll see is a lot smaller than the flute, so we'll play a lot higher. Even though it's small, it's very loud. This is a traditional flute played by the Frilla tribe in the Gambia, which I got when I went to visit, and it's very different. There's no keys on it. It's only got three finger holes, so you can't play as many notes. It's very, very long and the top bit is made by having a hole right at the top of the tube and covering it up with wax. And it sounds like this. And the last flute today is this ceramic flute, which again has no keys, but it's got six finger holes so you can play a complete scale on it. I think it's from Africa, but I can't remember where I got it. And it sounds like this. So I thought I'd play you a little piece of music by Leopold Mozart, who was Mozart's dad. Now I'm not going to play it on the orchestral flute, which is how you would normally hear it. I'm going to play it on the ceramic flute. So it might sound a bit strange because it's tuned to a slightly different scale, but it just about works. So this is Menuet by Leopold Mozart.
that sounded a bit different, didn't it? Now we're going to have a go at making our own flute. All you will need for this is a piece of paper, some tape and a pair of scissors. The first thing to do is cut off a few bits of tape to make it easier in a minute. Then roll up the piece of paper, check it's flat at the end and then use the tape to stick the tube together. And you can stick a bit more tape in the middle too. Now this next bit's a bit tricky so get an adult to help you. But you need to cut a little hole about 5cm in from the end. Once you've made your hole, cut it into a little rectangle shape. Then you need to cut four thin strips of tape and then stick them across the edge of the hole so that it sticks to the inside and the outside of the flute. Have a look at this close up to see what it should look like. You can use your finger or the scissors to press it down on the inside. This is creating the edge for the air to make the sound with. Once you've done that, look on the inside to see it's all flat and then stick some tape over the top to cover it up. You need to make sure it's completely covered otherwise the sound won't work. So stick on three or four bits of tape just to make sure. And then you're done. I've made a few different flutes to see how that changes the sound. You could try rolling the paper lengthways or widthways or having wider tubes or thinner tubes. Now you might be thinking these paper flutes will never work, but they do. What you need to do is blow across the hole, not into it, but just across it so that the air hits that top edge. It's pretty difficult, so it might take a bit of practice, but you can use your perseverance and eventually you'll get there. Let me show you. So you need to blow really gently and you might want to try rolling the flute down your lip and up your lip to try and help you find the sound. Just give it a go and see what you can do. And with this one, I've experimented with having a little finger hole to change the pitch. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. See you soon.